All right, how's it going everyone? I wanna have a quick talk about the facade pattern. And this is a pattern that you should actually probably be doing a lot in your code base. And I'll give you a good example as to why this is something that we're actually running into at work right now. So on my project, we do a lot of Amazon stuff and we have a lot of node services that need to communicate with Amazon, okay? So let me just go ahead and draw a couple of boxes because boxes are always cool. So this is our code, right? This is our code. And we have to integrate with a bunch of different Amazon libraries right so there's the aws sdk and the idea is if you need to like for example save something into s3 or write an entry to dynamo or do some type of logic with like api gateway web sockets your code needs to depend this is a dependency arrow your code has to depend on the aws sdk library so if you imagine what i mean by depends i mean like you have a file and you do at the top, you do an import or a require statement and you import the AWS SDK. And then you start doing some of the stuff they tell you to do here to basically put an object. And this works fine, but as your code grows and as you get 30, 40, 50, 100 different places that you're reading and writing to S3, this can become very problematic. Now, let me actually describe a real life scenario that's happening today, probably with a lot of other projects as well. There is a new version of the AWS SDK called V3. And if you're using V2 right now, it prints out a bunch of like deprecation logs in your code bases everywhere until you upgrade to V3. It's kind of annoying. I don't know why they did that. But I guess they really want you to get off of V2 and migrate to V3, which isn't that big of a deal. Like if you look at the, um, the interface, it does change a little bit, right? To store an object in S3, what you have to do is you have to import an individual package here, so AWS SDK slash client slash v3, or hyphen v3. You have to import different things. You have to initialize the client. And then you have to go down here and you have to create a put object command. So like the v3 basically runs with a bunch of different command objects. And you have to initialize them and you basically pass those with a sin method to your S3 client here. So the interface between this and this, it's a lot different. It's a lot different. And so, so if you have a bunch of different places in your code base that was like requiring this SDK and setting up the stuff that was necessary to write to S3, you have to refactor a lot of code. So the idea is you can do something called the facade pattern, where instead of your code depending directly on the SDK, your code would actually depend on something in between, right? So this would be like, uh, I don't know, you could have like a, a directory called source slash libs slash AWS slash S3 if you wanted to. Or you could just have like an AWS file like this. So I'll do like TS. And the idea is that your code, all throughout your code base, you would depend on your own internal implementation of like how do you write things to S3. And inside of this file, you'd probably have functions called like upload file or save file, something like that. And the idea is that now your code isn't directly depending on the SDK, it's depending on this. And again, you can achieve this with like dependency injection or something if you wanna get fancy. But the most basic way is just like have a, a file like this and just import that one into your code base. Now, this thing is the thing that depends on the SDK, right? So it kind of wraps the SDK and your stuff is kind of like loosely coupled to the SDK. Now, you could still get yourself into trouble if you were to return or require certain things that this interface requires and like you leak that through your abstraction, your code's still gonna have a lot of like refactoring issues. But if you do this right, basically what happens is when a new SDK comes out, for example, this V3 SDK that's causing a lot of like refactoring, all you need to do is you need to touch a single file that changes the implementation under the hood and uses a new approach. So basically, instead of changing 50 files, you just change one file and now your code is working exactly how it did before. It's writing to S3 because you're just calling these internal methods called upload file or save file. And this library right here, and then you basically just refactor this to use this new approach. So if you were to look at all the different clean architecture patterns, I would probably argue this is one of the most important ones to keep a more maintainable, um, upgradable code base. Because when stuff like this happens, it just takes a lot of developer time to go through every single file, change the implementation to use the SDK3, 
And then if you don't have tests, like you're going to be screwed because that's a lot of code that you're changing. And there's a high chance that you're breaking like all your logic where you upload files or where you fetch files. And it's just not pretty. So, so again, like I would just say, use the facade pattern, wrap your third party dependencies. If you think that they're going to be high risk and potentially change their interface in the future, um, because you know, stuff updates. Another good example of this is like the log4j um, security issue that happened like, was that six months ago or a year ago? I don't even know, it's been a while. But again, like if everywhere in your code base, you are dependent on log4j, let's just go ahead and do the same scenario so that you guys understand, but I'm sure you guys get this by now, right? Because you guys are smart. I'll just go log, log4j. I think it's called log4j, right? This is like a Java library that a lot of people are using that basically allows you to log stuff out um, to files or your console or wherever you want. But again, like if you were directly depending on this everywhere in your code base, and when that security vulnerability was found, like how much work would it take to refactor all your code away from log4j? If you were not doing the facade pattern, it's probably quite a lot of work. Um, instead, again, wrap your third party dependencies this would now become log 4j, and this would be like my special logger. Okay, and this would have like its own special methods that would log or, you know, do like a, a warn, error, info, stuff like that. And it's kind of up to you to decide like when do you apply this to what libraries. For example, if you're using a library like Lodash, do you really need to wrap this in the facade pattern? Probably not, right? Because already this stuff, like how, how often do you think this stuff is going to change? And also how hard is it going to be to do a control F, find everywhere you're importing like, I don't know, the Lodash fill method, the Lodash unique method, and replace it with something else, right? That's not gonna be too hard to do. You could still use the facade pattern to wrap Lodash if you think that there might be an issue with this. But ultimately, I don't know, like, it's up to you to decide, would you wanna wrap something like Lodash? And again, it kind of depends on like, how much are you using this library throughout your code base? If you start seeing that you're using Lodash in like every single file, then you should probably take some time, apply the facade pattern to this so that you have some type of insulation between your code and the third party code. If for whatever reason, Lodash had like a huge performance issue or a huge security issue, you could easily just swap out and not need to use it in the future. Yeah, that's all I want to share with you all. If you guys enjoyed watching this talk about more like higher level concepts and programming, keeping your code clean, be sure to subscribe, press the bell icon, like, and leave a comment. And like always in the description below, I have a link to my Discord channel. You're welcome to join. If you just want to find a place to hang out with some other developers and ask questions, we got a decent community of people who will be willing to help you if you had any type of question at all. All right, that's it. Have a good day. Happy coding.